All right, we take you now to that story. We've been talking about all morning the Democratic uh, Nursing Organization of South Africa, DENOSA, the accounting chapter, currently holding a media briefing on the outcomes of its PEC special meeting in response to latest developments in the Gauteng Health Department. Let's take you there live now. We have also noted the march by the farmers, uh, which uh, was, uh, you know, a continuation of what happened uh, in Senegal, where farmers marched yesterday going to union buildings under the, the, the goals of acting against farm killings. But in the same event, they threatened war on our people. Dinosa Gauteng strongly condemns his acts of threat to our constitutional democracy. We are calling for the police to arrest all those farmers who touched the police property and vandalized the court in Senegal. The law must take its course. We want to register our disappointment at the cowardice shown by the police by not engaging these unruly farmers. While when our people protest for service delivery, when the poor people protest, the working class people protest for service delivery, when workers uh, go on strike, they are met with violence, such as the one that we saw in 2012 in Marikana. They are met with tear gas, rubber bullets, and sometimes live ammunition in the same province. Uh, you've got, uh, um, uh, what's his name, uh, they, 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 they will remember his name, but we know that there's a chap that was shot and killed, uh, 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 Andre Stata, yes. But the police decide to, to hide away when the, the, the white uh, farmers are engaging them. This press briefing also takes place after a successful National Day of Action uh, by the workers in the country led by Corsatu in defense of collective bargaining, gender-based violence, campaigning for a safe, reliable public transport system. On the, this uh, happened last week, uh, on the 7th. Um, we want to congratulate workers for making the 7th of October a resounding success, despite the limitations imposed by the national state of disaster currently in place. The fight to protect collective bargaining is a fight that we want to promise government that we will take it to the highest court in the land. And we can assure Mr. Tito Mboweni, Pilchats, and Senzo Mkun that this fight will not end well for them, but it will end in tears for them. This is a fight that the working class is not prepared to lose. We must indicate that we uh, will not allow South Africa to be turned into a mini state of the United States of America, where unions only exist to deal with the working conditions. There's no collective bargaining. Where government prescribes how much is going to offer workers. We must indicate that uh, what uh, we despise is the fact that politicians received 4% increment and our hardworking public servants are being told stories. So we want to say to government, we will take you on this is a fight that we can assure even our members that uh, we are not prepared to lose. Ladies and gentlemen, on the Houghton Department of Health, the PC had very open discussions around the state of governance in the Houghton Department of Health and expressed concerns around the governance instability in the Department of Health, both politically and administratively. The Department of Health is coming from a painful era where organized labor and the management were not working in unison because of the arrogance of the then MEC of Health, Mr. Dani Masham, who left the department in Tatars and the lives of innocent people, uh, innocent, vulnerable people were lost. Then came MEC Dr. Gwen Ramahupa, who together with the intervention task team, was led, which was led by Professor Lukele, registered positive progress in stabilizing the department, both politically and administratively. This saw Professor Lukele sacrificing his work in the clinical setting to serve the people of Gauteng in the most crucial department that was on the verge of a collapse. And he registered some success in stabilizing the department together with Dr. Gwen Ramahupa. After the 2019 elections came MEC Bandile Masuku, whom we met a few days after his deployment and agreed that the following issues must be addressed with immediate effect. One, the critical feeling of vacant posts Two, improving staff morale to be his first priority. And he did this by introducing a program that is called Employee Value Proposition. The MEC went on the ground and met workers uh, from the front line 
and uh, were able to register progress in improving staff morale. Addressing staff shortages in the hospitals and clinics, we saw posts being advertised and people getting employed. Having a clinician-led, patient-centered healthcare system, one of the failures which contributed to the instability in the department is that it was not clinician-led. It was led by support staff. We then agreed that we cannot have a department of health that is not clinician-led. And the MEC acceded to this. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we're beginning to have a clinician-led uh, healthcare system. Ensuring improvement of governance and, and administrative stability in the department. That was achieved also uh, through uh, ensuring that uh, you know uh, posts were filled and uh, 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 critical posts to that effect. You will realize that the MSC appointed uh, CEOs in most of the hospitals, which did not have CEOs. The number six priority that we agreed on was that the community service nurses and student matters should be prioritized. It can be that uh, student nurses are always on a back foot beginning of the year. Number seven, we agreed that we should ensure the cleaning up of the department's procure procurement processes and integrity. And that is why that uh, when we had concerns around issues of PPE, we engaged him and uh, uh, in the process, he also initiated, you know, an investigation into that, which saw the Houting audit services beginning and red flagging some of the transactions. And fortunately, the, the premier by then uh, was also, um, you know, um, the premier also assisted by engaging the, the SIU to... to <clears throat> to continue with the uh, investigations. The last area was addressing the, the gray area of persistent medical uh, medicine stock outs. These, uh, ladies and gentlemen, were things that, uh, in our view, were ensuring that the department is delivering on its mandate, which is to give quality health care services. It is fair to say, since his appointment as MEC, Dr. Bandile Masugu had registered the desired progress in turning things around in the department. Under his stewardship, the department was also improving from its previous reputation. Regrettably, having done a good job, came the monster called COVID-19, which shook the whole country and the world and tested the resilience of our public healthcare system. The dedicated men and women of our country who are frontline workers fought a good fight, led by Masugu and Lukele, and triumphed over this disease. Unfortunately, all that hard work is now overshadowed by this scandal, and all the gains are being reversed. It is for this reason that, as Dinosa Houting, after having followed all developments, we think our views are justified in calling for the Premier to exercise leadership and stop tiptoeing around these issues. He must make up his mind and tell us whether he's firing Masuku or not. While at it, he should also consider stepping aside and take special leave himself while the investigation continues because uh, his name has been coming up and we think that where there's smoke there might be fire and therefore the enemy the, the premier should also consider taking special leave and allow for the siu investigations to come to 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 to, to complete and when that process has happened and if his name is cleared as well we will gladly work with him we must indicate that this view is also informed uh, <clears throat> by the fact that Makura has always been spared while he is, is the presiding premier. Under life asset demand, he was spared, and the bug stopped with him. We saw the Department of Health building and other buildings in this province being uh, declared not complying with occupational health and safety uh, 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 processes. He is on record having admitted during the, the, the time of the fire in the Department of Health that uh, he is ashamed that uh, the staff of the Houghton Provincial Government were subjected to such poor working conditions. Now the PPE scandal. We must indicate that PPE was coordinated centrally. If you go to EdCon, where is the operational center for COVID-19, you'll realize that his staff is there. This issue was not isolated to the Department of Health only. So his office is also involved. So this also happened under his watch. 
So we think that uh, Premier Makura, really, in all honesty, we must be able to confront the truth. We've got nothing personal against him. He's a leader that we respect. But sometimes being a leader requires that you must be decisive and you must also be willing to take responsibility. But Dani Mashangu uh, took the responsibility for life as it many, and uh, she was fired. What has happened to the Premier? We must ask that pertinent question. We know, we can tell you that there are more scandals that are going to come up, especially in the DIT. We're not going to engage on that. But we're saying that there are things that are coming and the back in the province stops with the Premier. So we must be told. Because people that fall victim is the bureaucrats, the officials, and the MECs. But what happens to the Premier? Because at the end of the day, the Premier is the head of government and is the leader of government in the province. So the call of Dinosa for him to consider stepping aside while the investigation continues is not a personal attack on the Premier, but we think that it is a fair call. Even our members, when there are things that uh, they are being accused of, they are always put on precautionary suspension. And precautionary suspension or taking special leave does not constitute a sanction or a judgment. We are not saying he's guilty, but we are saying that uh, for that SIU uh, investigation to continue, uh, he must also consider stepping aside. Lastly, our interest is the stability of the Houghton Department of Health and, and uh, all critical senior vacant posts must be filled now. What do we mean when we say all uh, senior critical vacant posts must be filled? Currently, the Department of Health is having an acting MEC. The Department of Health is having an acting HOT. The Department of Health is having an acting chief director, supply chain management, is having an acting uh, CFO, is having an acting DTG HR. Now, we know that the DTG HR was suspended at the same time as the MEC, as the HOT. So we understand that uh, up until that uh, process of investigating is exhausted, that post cannot be filled. But the one of the CFO has been vacant for more than a month. And as stakeholders, we have not been consulted to say that the process of uh, employing a CFO has started. The one of the HOT, we know that the HOT has resigned. And uh, the reason for him resigning is the fact that he learned about his suspension in the media. He was not told. He became aware that he suspended when he heard the news. That is highly unprofessional for a person who has sacrificed uh, uh, to serve the government of Gauteng. You only learn about your suspension in the media. So we think that post, the processes to fill that post have got to begin. The process of uh, why we are saying uh, Makura must not confuse us. He must decide. He can't tell us that uh, the SIU report found that MEC, uh, the former MEC was not compliant in terms of what is required from him uh, in the constitution. He has broken the PFMA Act and so in those things. So effective is telling us that he, he was incompetent in exercising his oversight role. Then the Premier then says, but on the second round of uh, investigation, if he's cleared of corruption, I'll consider hiring him again. So is the Premier, maybe we must ask this question, is the Premier telling us that Bandile Masuk is not competent administratively, but if he's found to be uh, not corrupt, he will hire him even though he's not competent. So that is why we are saying, Premier, come out and be clear, stop confusing us. The reason why we are saying this thing is that our interest is that there should be stability in the Department of Health because we are approaching the festive season People have relaxed uh, in terms of their social behavior. We may have a second wave of COVID-19, and the frontline workers will be found unprepared without PPE. We are saying this informed by the experience that after the state's chief director, uh, supply chain management, was, uh, was, 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 was suspended, and the CFO resigned, there came a new acting uh, chief director, uh, mm -hmm. supply chain management, who on arrival at the job did not want to sign any papers in terms of purchasing PPE. We found ourselves with low levels of stocks of PPE. He then said it's decentralizing the system. PPE must be procured in hospitals. In doing that, he forgot that the clinics do not have the same budget as the hospital. 
the district health service will not have them, that muscle. And also, before you decentralize, you start by making sure that there's enough PPE stock, then you implement that decision so that there's a smooth transition. But because everybody is acting, it's a cast, it's generations, then we found healthcare workers on the front line being exposed, working without PPE. So you cannot function in such a department. And one thing that we must not forget is that we are not only fighting COVID-19. Other diseases have not taken leave. We still have the challenge of TP. We still have the challenge of HIV. We still have the challenge of hypertension. And approaching the festive season, and with being us being on alert level one, you will see people consuming alcohol. And we know that uh, alcohol results in aggressive and violent behavior. We'll see car accidents. So the healthcare system will be overburdened during this festive season. We cannot afford to continue functioning in the healthcare system without a proper stable governance in the Department of Health administratively and politically. That is why we are seated here. Our views are informed by the fact that we exist to protect workers and we will not wait until workers are in trouble for us to act.